Hi, thanks for joining me. My name is Jenny with Medical Software Associates. The purpose of this video series is to train new practices on the use of the MicroMD practice management system. You double click the icon on your desktop to launch the MicroMD product. Each user will have their own unique username and password to gain access to the software. Simply clicking the OK button is how you'll enter into the product. In this video series, we're going to review several different things. We're going to review system navigation, patient demographics, scheduling and appointment searches, billing charge entry, billing and daily closes, claim processing, both electronic and paper, patient statement processing, pre-collection processing, collections, and system configuration and maintenance files. Those topics cover all of the basic practice management system needs for new practices. There will be additional advanced modules that we will train on following the new practice training. To start, let's go ahead and review our system navigation. You'll notice you have a series of drop-down menus located at the top of the product, as well as having a bunch of shortcut icons over to the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and review our drop-down menus in brief. Under File, you'll have the ability to exit the program, Save Rows As, which is an export feature utilized with the reporting module to save some of your report data into Excel spreadsheets, and Print Setup, which allows you to select a printer other than your default printer when needed. Edit menu is something that you'll access from the different components of the system, and this menu will change depending upon where you are in the system. Appointment drop-down. This allows you access to, under the appointments, and then the sub-menu, different view screens that you have. Daily view allowing you to see a single provider. Location day view allowing you to see a particular day based on location. A provider day view allowing you to see a particular day based on providers resource allocation view, and weekly view. You can experiment with these. The most commonly used is going to be the daily view and the provider day view, and we'll be reviewing those in more detail. Appointment inquiry is a window that allows you to type in a patient name or account number and search for an appointment on the system, either past or future. This allows you quick access to an appointment for a particular patient. An example for appointment inquiry would be when a patient calls up saying, I know I have an appointment sometime in November, I just can't recall the date. That would be an easy way to find that out. There are alternate methods to finding that out, but appointment inquiry would be the most efficient. Under appointment reports, there are several different reports, and we'll be reviewing some of these in our general training and then others in advanced training. Check and check out is a feature that allows you to check patients as they process through your practice. When the patient arrives, you can hit the checkbox for arrival. When the patient's checked in, checked in would indicate the patient's ready to be seen in the back. They've completed their paperwork in the front office and the check out when the patient would leave the office. And we'll be reviewing that in a little more detail under the scheduling portion of our training. Holiday vacation will be reviewed in administrative as well as hospital rounds and setup. All of these are administrative processes that can be reviewed by uh, system administrators or managers in the practice at a later training. And your waiting list allows you to open up the waiting list or patients waiting on appointments for a particular day or date range. Notice from here we'll have the ability to delete and so forth. This will go into a little more detail during the scheduling portion of our training. Moving on to our next menu is the auxiliary menu. Auxiliary are add-on modules, things that you subscribe to in addition to your practice management. Most practices uh, don't utilize a good majority of these, um, and those are advanced training modules, so they won't be discussed during this training. Under billing, you'll see we have auto charge posting, auto payment posting, batch charge posting, and batch payment posting. Auto charge and auto payment posting are additional modules that have to be purchased. If your practice has subscribed to these, we will provide you with training on each of those modules. Batch 
charge and payment posting will be reviewed as part of the billing training. Billing inquiry is the patient ledger and allows you to see a snapshot of the billing for a particular patient or family and we'll be reviewing that during our billing training as well as our charges and payments which is also part of the billing training and charge slip will be reviewed not only under the appointment section but in the general user section as well. Day sheet is something that every user needs to understand and the day sheet is utilized to track each and every click in the system for reporting on totals at the end of the day as well as some of the appointment changes through the day. We'll be reviewing day sheet under each of the components at the appropriate times. Itemized statements and statements and bills will be reviewed during the statement processing portion of training. Claims under our claims menu, we have the ability to complete our electronic billing, paper billing, and secondary EOB reports. We'll be reviewing this during the claims processing portion of our training. Under maintenance, this is where the system stores and allows you to update your maintenance files like diagnosis codes used, procedure codes used, referring doctor service facility, etc. One of the main functions utilized by everyone in the practice is going to be the patient maintenance file. This is where all of your patient records are stored. And so just about every single person in the practice will have access to the patient maintenance files. However, most of the other items under this listing pertain only to the billing office. And these are trained and reviewed under the management section or the system configuration and maintenance file section of the training, which is the last portion of the training. Miscellaneous allows you to keep an electronic Rolodex, a contact manager, for any purpose. Uh, you can have different offices that you might deal with, supply companies, etc. And you can also have restaurants and drug reps and so forth. You can keep information on those types of people in your contact manager. Contact manager access will be based on security profile set up by the office administrator. Day sheet day select. This is something we will be reviewing during both the billing training and during the appointment training. Most of the other items in here are advanced or administrative users, with the exception of set user. Set user merely logs you out of the software and brings up the login screen for the next person to log in. It's more of a convenience than anything else. However, the system will not allow you to select this unless all windows are closed and you're at a blank desktop, just like you see here. Reporting menu is something we'll review in during the billing and administrative portions of our training. Setup is also an administrative menu. It will be reviewed during administrative training. The utility drop-down is another administrative and billing training that will be conducted um, as an advanced course. The only thing under utility that all users will be trained on is the ability to change your password. In order to use this change password, you must know your current password to change your password. Finally, the window drop-down just allows you to tile vertical, horizontal, layer, or cascade your windows. Additionally, as you start to open windows, you'll see them listed here. And this can be helpful when you lose a window or think something's not opening for you. Come to your window drop-down and see if you see it listed and select it from this section. That's usually helpful when you have a situation where maybe a window was resized and is hidden behind another window. And finally, we have the help drop down. The help drop down menu, you will have access to a reference manual, which is extremely helpful in reviewing different processes within MicroMD. Each of these sections will walk you step by step through the different sections of the software. For instance, if you go under, let me expand that, components or subsections like uh, insurance plans, patient module, day sheets, etc. And each of these is fairly uh, detailed in explaining what they're used for, how to create new ones, and taking you through step-by-step -step processes on how to complete these or how to perform that function. Additionally, it's going to give you good cautions and good notes uh, explaining why those things might be used. So this is a really good self-supportive user guide. You also have some online resources. However, those are going to bring you to the developer direct and they're just going to delay processing of any issues that you might be trying to bring to our attention. So it's better for you, if you will, to go ahead and contact us by phoning us at support at 800-846-2900 for urgent matters or by email at support at medicalsoftwareinc.com for non-urgent situations. And finally, you have help and about, which is just going to tell you what particular build or version of the software you're running, if that's ever requested of you. And so that is your drop-down menus. And you also have shortcut buttons here on the left-hand side that open up the different components of the software. You also have this drop-down arrow 
and launch pane options, which allows you to determine what things you do and don't want to see. For instance, you may not care about task management or billing inquiry or um, a lot of these. And by unchecking them, I can just say, these are things that I'm not going to deal with or I haven't subscribed to, so I don't need them on my desktop. And I can turn those off and limit the things that I'm seeing here. Additionally, I can say I want my daily view schedule up at the top and I want my patient right below that because those are the two main things that I use. And finally, I can say I always want my check-in and check-out by highlighting it to be my default window when I log in the system because I use that because I'm front desk, so I use it all the time. And when I say, okay, it's going to go ahead and make those changes. Now, the next time I log in, my check-in, check-out would automatically launch as I logged into the system like you see here. And so one other component of navigation, and let me go ahead and open just a couple of different things. So I've opened my daily view schedule. I'm going to go ahead and open patient and I'm going to open my check in check out. And so I have three different windows open and notice I can minimize these down to the bottom and they show here. I can minimize this one and it creates yet another tab here to bring those back. I simply hit the maximize button. Additionally, as I'm selected on a particular place, my menu is going to reflect that. So I am in the daily view and therefore my menu is the daily view menu and notice the options available in my daily view menu and always at the bottom you'll see an exit window. Let's go ahead and open up the patient or the gear and tour search window and notice now I'm at patient and my options have changed but I still have at the very bottom my exit window. I'm going to go ahead and hit exit window and that's going to close that and finally I have my check in check out. So when I expand my check in check out Again, my menu is going to change here. Remember when we talked about the window drop down and I told you to look and see what things you have open and here you can see the two windows that I have open and I can select one from that window drop down to toggle in between it. I can also take the title bar and left click hold and move these windows because maybe I just want or re even resize them because I want both windows to be open side by side because I utilize both so much. I have the ability to do that. Remember that you also have your tile vertical, tile horizontal, etc. So you can utilize all these different things in the software to set up your desktop the way it's most convenient for you. But just remember as I click on the different ones, watch your title bar here over at the left and this is called your action icon pane. It's going to change from my check-in options to my appointment options. And as I hit my exit window, anything related to daily view, which this calendar is part of, is going to close. And then exiting window here takes me back down to my desktop. So let me log out real quick. I'm logged in currently as a user named user, but let me log in as front desk and show you the difference in setup. So I'm logging in as front desk user and you'll see that because I have different security items set for front desk user, I have a different configuration. So automatically my check-in window is opening because I told it to do that. I also have different options if you'll notice here. Appointment inquiry is my first one because that's something as a front desk that I'm going to be handling quite a bit. Also notice in my drop-down menu, see all these items that are grayed out that I don't have access to. I can click, but I can't access. I can't access all these billing options. I can't do anything in claims. I have very limited access in, in the maintenance drop-down and also in the reporting drop-down, as well as my setup menu. So based on my user profile and my security setup, that's going to determine what things I have access to. So you can see that there are several ways to access things in the MicroMD system. You can use your drop-down menus. You can use your shortcut keys. Or you can use your shortcut icons down in the bottom of the desk. What you see and what you have access to is going to be based on what your username and profile is logged in and what security permissions your system administrator has given you for the product. When you're complete or done using MicroMD for the day, it's always a good idea to completely close out of the software. You don't want to leave your username logged in 
uh, and have other people documenting under your username. Rules under HIPAA are becoming more and more uh, strict and requiring that not only do you have auto logout uh, configured on your software, which we can do at an administrative level, but that you're making sure that each user has their own unique login, their own unique password, and that they know they should be logging out each and every time. To do this quickly or convenient for other users in the practice, you want to go to from your desktop with nothing open, miscellaneous, set user, and that brings you to the login screen. This is going to complete this portion of the training. Next, we're going to review the patient module and configuring and reviewing adding patients to your system.